I want you to hit me as hard as you can. This week, we're taking a look back at the 2001 psychological slash religious horror thriller Frailty, starring and directed by Bill Paxton. Frailty is primarily set in 1979 and centers on the Meeks family, a father and his two young sons. The mother died while giving birth to the younger son, but nine years down the line, the Meeks guys are living a happy life together. Until one night, when the father, who is played by Paxton and credited only as dad, tells his sons he has seen a vision from God. An angel has visited him and informed him that the devil has set loose demons into the world. World, and he has been tasked with destroying these demons. The angel showed me. There are demons among us. The devil has released them for the final battle. Problem is, these demons look just like normal, horrified people when dad gets a hold of them. And the so-called magical weapons he's meant to destroy them with are just items found lying around. A piece of pipe, a pair of gloves, and an axe with the name Otis carved in the handle. Dad says he can see the evil deeds these demons have committed when he puts his bare hands on them. <laughs> younger son Adam says he can see these things too. Older son Fenton doesn't see any of this stuff. He believes his father has gone insane and brainwashed his brother into being complicit in these murders. Paxton surrounds himself with a great supporting cast, headed up by Matthew McConaughey, who plays an older Fenton in scenes set in the present day. McConaughey also serves the film's narrator as he tells the story to an FBI agent played by Powers Booth. Several Fenton is played by Matthew O'Leary, with Jeremy Sumter as the nine-year-old Adam. Also in the cast are Missy Kreider, Lucas Q, who is best known for his early roles in Cohan Luke and Easy Rider, and acting coach Vincent Chase, who helped Paxton work with the child actors. If the name sounds familiar to you, that's because Vincent Chase is the person the lead character in the show Entourage may or may not have been named after. Screenwriter Brent Hanley has jokingly said that Frailty is 100% biographical, as the story is set in a small town in his name state of Texas, where he grew up attending church and reading Stephen King novels. The script is sent out on a Tuesday and quickly rejected by all the major studios, but by Thursday, it was in the hands a child's play producer, David Kirshner, who optioned it and began working with Hanley on further drafts. The script was eventually sent to Hanley's fellow Texas native, Paxton, but getting him to direct the film wasn't the original intention. While Kirshner was only hoping he would sign on to star in it, Paxton got so wrapped up in the material that he pitched the idea of him getting behind the camera as well. This became Paxton's feature directorial debut and his second directing credit after the wacky Fish Heads video he made in 1980. Inspiration from classic child and peril films like The Night of the Hunter and Invaders from Mars, Paxton wanted this movie to have an old school look and feel, and he recruited Jaws cinematographer Bill Butler to help him with that. The fact that the story was set in Texas was something else that had appealed to Paxton from the start. And even though the movie would end up being shot in California for budgetary reasons, he strived to make it seem as Texas as possible. Part of that endeavor was the casting of Booth and McConaughey, both Texans, and Paxton said the film got funded and distributed because of McConaughey. Produced on a budget of $11 million, the film ended up pulling in just 17 million at the global box office when it was released on April 12, 2002, getting lost in the shuffle among other releases like Resident Evil, Blade 2, Panic Room, and The Scorpion King. When you take into account the box office juggernaut Jason X came out just two weeks later, it's plain to see this film never stood a chance. Just kidding about that one. Jason X made him less money than Frailty did. There were too many other flashier options in theaters at the time, and the abstract title surely didn't do it any favors. The suggested alternate title, God's Hands, probably wouldn't have fared any better. But really, this isn't a movie that was likely to be raking in the dough no matter when it was released. This sort of heavy subject matter, with no fantastical elements other than a quick shot of one of Dad's angelic visions, isn't something that was going to have average moviegoers flocking to it. After viewers at early screens were offended by the perceived child abuse and called the film morally reprehensible, and even walked out in droves when the first killing happened, Paxton was feeling like he and his movie might be in trouble. So he turned to some familiar names to help. He showed the movie to his collaborators James Cameron and Sam Raimi, as well as Stephen King hoping they would give him positive quotes to feature in the marketing, and they did. Frailty was promoted with quotes from each one of them. Those quotes aren't much help to the movie financially, but at least they helped save the film and Paxton from getting a bad reputation. Then again, maybe it would have made more money with some controversy. Maybe they should have featured quotes in the marketing like, is Bill Paxton really an insane religious fanatic? And does this movie promote murder and child abuse? Come see and decide for yourself. Of course, Paxton wasn't advocating that parents force their children to kill people with them for religious reasons. He was telling a horror story. 
fact that these people in early screens were so outraged and disturbed really goes to show how engaging and effective his storytelling really was. Frailty was recently well received by those who did see it and when it was first released, with Roger Ebert, who was known to have something of a shaky relationship with the horror genre, even given a four-star review. It just wasn't seen by many people. It was a lucky break for everyone involved that Paxton decided to bring his vision of the story to the screen, as the film holds up to this day because of the classic approach he took to the material. He said he decided to direct the film because, I quote, I was worried the wild-eyed director would get a hold of this material and sensationalize it just to shock people, and that to me wouldn't do the script justice. My vision of the story has always been the idea that it is a very edgy script that pushes a lot of buttons, especially because children are involved. But I thought that's exactly the reason to give it a real old Hollywood approach, where all the darkness is implied instead of being explicit. We hear a chop or a scream, but we never see a drop of blood. In the hands of a different director, this easily could have been something gore-soaked and appalling, shocking in the moment, but forgettable. Paxton turned Hanley's script into one of the most engrossing and well-crafted horror films of the last 20 years. The story needed to be handed delicately, because the concept is deeply disturbing right away. The dad character is attentive, obviously cares for his sons, jokes around with them. Sure love peace. You must. You better be careful, though. You just might turn into one and makes sure they know he loves them. Then he tells these young kids that he needs their help killing these demons that appear to be human beings, and it's terrifying no matter what the reality is. If that is right, there are demons just walking around out there. If Fenton is right, dad is crazy, and the kids are stuck with him while he murders people in front of them and says he's doing something righteous. Well, that's even scarier than the idea of demons. For most of the film, we're seeing things play out through Fenton's eyes, so we're skeptical of dad's claims from the start. It's like we're watching an act of child abuse being carried out by a beloved parent who's gone crazy and turned homicidal. The cast made all of this thoroughly believable. Paxton is reliably great in the role of dad, and O'Leary proved to be capable of carrying a large amount of the film on his shoulders. The cutaways to McConaughey and Booth had an extra sinister edge to the proceedings, and Sumter did well as the younger and more naive of the Meek brothers. One of the best things about Paxton's performance is that, even as the Meek's family home life turns into a living nightmare, dad never loses loving, caring demeanor. A great example of this comes when dad is trying to convince Fenton to help him capture the latest demon person. Fenton says he can't, and dad replies, Can't never could do anything. Such a goofy dad thing to say when their kid tells them they can't do something. But here it's said in the middle of a very dark and twisted situation. The film benefits from not being overly stylized. The more down to earth and natural it looks, the more realistic it feels, makes the horrific events all the more unsettling. Paxton and Butler were quite successful at capturing the old school look they were going for, complete with driving scenes shot on a soundstage and a floating head gag that was accomplished by having the actor wear black clothing in a dark room and looks like something straight out of the 1950s. That floating headshot is part of one of the film's standout sequences, in which Dad locks Fenton in a cellar, telling him he's to stay in there and pray until God shows him a vision of the truth. Fenton is down there for days. McConaughey's voiceover tells us, They went beyond fear into total insanity. It's really great, troubling stuff. All this time after its initial release, Frailty is still just as gripping as it was when it first came out. Hanley's script has so many layers to it, and Paxton and his supporting cast brought the story and characters to screen in such a pitch-perfect way. This is a movie that not only holds up to multiple viewings, it begs to be seen multiple times. Bill Paxton wasn't just one of our great character actors, he also proved to be a fantastic filmmaker. It's a shame he didn't get the chance to demonstrate his skills in that department more often. But at least he was able to give us Frailty. If you haven't seen this movie yet, seek it out and watch it at least a couple times. And if you have any other suggestions for us, please leave it in the comments below.